Well, few people were closer to David Cameron than his communications director, Craig, now Sir Craig Oliver. Having left Number 10 with his political master, he has rushed out a provocative memoir of the frenetic EU referendum campaign and its aftermath, called Unleashing Demons, the inside story of Brexit. And Sir Craig joins me now. You lay out in the book how Theresa May kept you hanging on, wouldn't commit, ran a submarine strategy, sort of swimming under the water and then popping up when it suited her. Do you think she behaved dishonourably? No, I don't think it was dishonourable, but I think that what I'm trying to say in the book is it was frustrating. So what was happening in the run-up to the referendum campaign was the, the Prime Minister didn't know which side his Home Secretary was going to be on. It was and coming, I, wasn't it? Well I, re well, I recount in the book that there was a moment where David Cameron was on a train to a speech with me, and I saw him suddenly pick up his phone, and he was on the phone to Theresa, and he was just saying, look, come on, this is very difficult, you need to be stronger on, on this message. Um, and then later that day, Theresa May came out for Remain, but when she did come out, it was very much 51-49. And the story of the campaign was her being equivocal. And that was a problem for us. Now, it's perfectly legitimate. But she let him down, didn't she? Well, it's, I mean... perfect, it's a perfectly legitimate thing to do. I'm sure she was sincere in her views. Why is it legitimate? So she let well, down because... the campaign? Well, no, because... She helped you lose. No, no, because I think what she was saying was that this is where I stand on Europe. I don't think the sky will fall on if we, if we leave Europe. She was 51-49. Okay. I'm sure she was sincere in that. You're very clear in here you really didn't like Michael Gove. Did you like Theresa May? Is she a nice person? I, I worked with her very professionally. Uh, she's she's a very strong home, was a very strong Did home. Did you say you like her? Um, I didn't really know her socially. Not really. I didn't. Well, I didn't really spend that much time with her in that sense. I mean, she's a very very capable politician. Um, okay, so how big a failure was it losing? I think, it, well, it, a massive one, because we, we... For you personally? Yeah, no, no, I accept responsibility for it. I was very um, significant part of that campaign, and I totally accept responsibility in that. We made a number of mistakes. I'm very clear about those. The two biggest ones, I think, were we believed in what James Carville said was, the, you know, the iron law of politics. It's the economy, stupid. And we put all our chips on economic risk and believed that would trump all arguments. In reality, as we got closer to the day, it was clear that immigration was trumping it as an argument. We didn't have enough of a I mean, that. that's a really sort of interesting admission of failure in a way, and that you're saying someone else was wrong Some... rather than you were. <laughs> no. You know, James Carville was wrong about that no, as no, a general no, rule. No, no, no. We were wrong because we believed at that moment, I'm not, I'm not trying to push it onto James Carville, we believed that that would be a significant factor and would trump all arguments. What was the other mistake you made then? The second one was um, that we believed that millions of people who hadn't voted in 2015 and hadn't voted in many elections before that wouldn't vote this time. They did, nearly three million of them. Is that it? Almost all for leave. What, you Those say, are the only two mistakes well, no, you made. Well, you say, is that... No, there are other mistakes too. But you say, is that it? The reality of that is that those 2.8 million people were more than enough to short, ensure the victory of Brexit. I, I just ask it that way because the book is sort of is very thin on admissions of where you went wrong. I don't think so. I mean, what, what else did you get wrong then? Well, what else were your big mistakes? Well, the big, the big, the, what the book is trying to do is recount what was it like being in. No, I know 10. that, but what else did you get wrong? Well, if you let, let me explain, Christian. One of the things that I'm trying to get across is what was it like being in the middle of this tumultuous campaign. We did not expect the number of people to come out in support of Brexit. Very significant figures that that did. We also had a coalition that stretched from the Conservative Party right away across to the Greens. But when we put that team on the pitch. They were all playing to different systems. They all had different messages. That was clearly a, a mistake, whereas Leave clearly had fingertip control of his messaging. We didn't, because we were relying on wide groups of people who had very different reasons for what they were doing. I mean, that does feel like you're pointing the finger at other people. I mean, the book is full of sort of... It was <laughs> Go's fault, it was the BBC getting it wrong, it was not Boris, it was... Not at all. I can't... I mean, look, you've got lots of... Bits of paper. All right, in your well, book. let me let but you me actually specific... haven't read it if you don't think that I'm accepting that there were mistakes. No, well, I of mean, course you know, there I've, were mistakes, I, I've and read I take full responsibility um, for them. Let me put you some specific um, criticisms. Um, you know, um, Roland Rudd, who was on the same side as you, yes. says your involvement was the biggest disaster because you were stopping them from attacking other Tories. You know, you didn't want this blue on blue attack, so yeah. you weren't attacking I, I think Boris Ro I think and, and Michael Gove. I find Roland's. Um, attack extraordinary. The two things is, had we turned it into a blue-on-blue -blue war, 
One of the biggest problems we had was that we were alienating other groups who thought that this was just a Tory battle. And one of the problems of constantly fighting each other and being at each other's throats was that it was alienating those groups. The other no, it thing put that... the party before the question. That's the point, isn't it? Your, your concern was party management. You didn't I... want the Conservatives no, to look like you were at each other's no, throats. I'm sorry. I don't, you I didn't did... attack the, I'm sorry. the argument. I don't... What? The argument was what? Attacking Boris and you Michael would, You Gert. wouldn't go up against people on your own side, in your own party. We went, of course we went up against people on our own side. But where I also think Well, that, David Cameron wouldn't debate Boris Johnson. Well, where I that was your decision, think, probably. Where I it? also think that Roland Rudd has got it wrong is he is saying that they should have been more positive at the campaign and gone round singing Ode to Joy, and everybody would have been extremely happy with that. In fact, very, very specific analysis revealed that the key group of people in the middle who... You had a group on one side who were definitely going to vote to remain, a group on the other side who were definitely going to vote to leave, and a bunch of people in the middle who were not convinced that the European Union was a great thing, but were prepared to listen to economic arguments. And that's what we needed to focus on. And for Roland to say that we should fo focus on people who just already were saying Ken that we Clark's should remain... What about criticism of you that, you, you know, that your team lied to him about... Well, this is a, a TV appearances. This is a completely and, and, and we're sort of up to dark arts, and that you were basically PR obsessed, and that was a mistake. Well, I think you were short term I, PR I, obsessed. I saw that anecdote in the paper today, and I don't recognise it in any way. You deny it? I, I don't recognise it. I, yes, I do deny. It. Okay. I don't recognise that in any way. We All right. Well, let me if you deny. Let's no, no, move no, on. No, Christian, you keep doing this. You're asking me questions. Let me answer them. Well, you, you deny it. No, no, no. But you asked me if we were PR obsessed. The reality of being in a modern government is you have to be able to fill the vacuum or it will be filled for you. You have to be able to tell your story or it will be told for you. And I think but isn't Ken that is what rather people rejected dated en masse? They hated the way you were running PR in the government. That's why Farage was so popular. Uh, do you he honestly was think, Christian, you that they were voting on... Do you honestly think that the people were voting on the government's PR policy? I really they don't think They were voting so, on the style of government that you were propagating and you got it massively well, wrong. What evidence do you have for that? That's well, a, you that's lost a the very referendum. Bold... Well, yeah, no, the, the people voted for Brexit. People voted. They didn't vote on whether or not we had a certain PR strategy. I okay. think that's a pretty nonsense. Well, thing given, to say. I mean, okay, you say it's a massive failure and you take responsibility for it. Given that, why have you got a knighthood? Why have I got a knighthood? Isn't that a reward for failure? Look, I'm not going to justify why I've got a knighthood. I just think that that's a fool's errand trying to do that. Other people why? can decide when. Because, you know, you end up in a situation where any answer you give is not, is not going to work. I mean, as David uh, Cameron's PR man, not... shouldn't you have advised him that it was a very bad idea to give you a knighthood? Because he would look bad as a result. It would look like cronyism I as he look, left Downing I, Street. I don't accept that. Look, other people can decide whether or not it's appropriate for me to have a knighthood. Do you feel you deserve it? I'm going to allow other people to... Uh, you can keep asking me this. I'm not going to, to, to answer any more on that. Well, why, I don't see why you don't want to address how you feel about... And this is a big honour. You know, this is something that had been held by amazing no. knights of the realm, Winston Churchill, Francis Drake, Walter Raleigh, and now Craig Oliver. You must I feel... I feel very pre that, appreciative. That, ..that you deserve and, it. And the words that, you know, you know to, to use a pun, I feel very honoured by it. But I'm going to allow other people to decide whether they think that's appropriate or not. Um, you're sort of out now, aren't you? Are, are you... If George Osborne asked you to come back into politics, would you come back? No. You're out forever. I, I have no plans to go into politics anymore. I've had a very good six years, very happy doing it. I thought David Cameron was a great Prime Minister. I think history will see him as that. And I was very proud to work for him, but I think my time is done now. Craig Oliver, thank you very much for coming in. Sir Craig, sorry, I beg your pardon.